Why do I need to shut up? Scared to hear what? You are scared to hear. Scared to hear what? To hear something that violates your religion, you're scared to get your way with or somebody else will go to something else. Then why if I'm scared to hear, why did I why did I record a debate with you on my conference call? Why did I spend more than an hour with you? And on that debate no i didn't i focused on scripture and i'm focused i'm focusing on scripture even right now while i'm talking with you on the phone but you're you're yelling and screaming you're out of control i mean you you've lost your you've lost your screws bud you, you lost your screws man you're gonna be judged dude you lost your screws No, no, first of all, first of all, the creator's name is Yahuwah, and he's going to judge all of the lawless people. He's going to, he's going to, he's going to judge all the lawless people who follow the lawless anti-Messiah. And that's the one you follow. You follow the anti-Messiah. You follow the lawless one. He's called the lawless one. That's why they call it the lawless, because they don't want to obey the law. Do you, have a, do you have some kind of mental problem I should be aware of? Wow. Because what you're saying makes no sense. What I'm saying I makes no sense, huh? Well, let me get some scripture. Let me get some scripture. Since you say that I'm not going through scripture, let me get some scripture on this subject. And maybe that'll make you happy. Will that make you happy? Let's, let's, let's look up the word lawless. No problem. Not a problem. I'll look up the word lawless. And here's a few scriptures here. Look. Second Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 7. For the mystery of lawlessness already works. Only there is one who restrains now until he is taken out of the way. Let's go to another one. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 8. Then the lawless one will be revealed. Whom Yahuwah will kill with the breath of his mouth and destroy by the manifestation of his coming. Hallelujah. Wow, let's read some more. Can I go through some more scripture, Paul? All right, let's go to 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9. First Timothy chapter one, verse nine, as knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous person, but for the lawless like you, Paul, people who hate the law and don't want to follow the law and the insubordinate for the ungodly, for sinners, for the unholy and profane, for murders of fathers and murders of mothers and manslayers. Let's. You just contradicted what you said on the phone, right? Because you said we're justified and made right just through Christ. Uh huh. So, so Paul's not talking about those who are in Christ. Paul's talking about those who are not hey, in Paul, Christ. Paul, why don't you bring Christ. it down a notch, man? Stop yelling. Why don't you bring it down? Calm down. Practice some self control. Come on, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Calm down. Practice some self control. Bring it down, bud. Come on. Let's see. Let's see how. Let's see how powerful your Messiah is. Can you get some self-control? Oh the law, which promises life, only brings death through sin. The law makes you sinful beyond measure. Romans eight two three two three three. The law is weak. That's interesting because Paul says. Paul says that. Hold on, bud. Hold on. 
Hold on, hold your horses. I know you don't like the law and you're going to pick every scripture that hates the law, but let me pick some that, that the Paul loves the law. Give me a second, bud. Hold on. Give me a second, bud. Hold on. Calm down. It's going to be okay. You're still going to you're still going to be physically alive unless Yahoo strikes you dead, but you know, you're alive right now. Calm down. Check this out. Check, check this out, man. I'm going to I'm reading the word law right now in the book of Romans and we can see here Absolutely, it's talking about the Torah. Very good. I'm glad you know that. Romans, Romans chapter 7. Hold on. Romans chapter 7. Go there with me, Paul. Go there with me. Romans chapter 7, verse 12. Romans. Yeah, see? That anti-law spirit inside of you, that law-hating spirit, doesn't want me to go to scriptures that shows that the law is actually beautiful. Okay, so, so then why, why are you ignoring the scriptures I'm quoting, Bubba? Why? Bubba, I listened, I listened to the scripture you gave me, and now I'm trying to give you a scripture, but you don't want to listen. I know the scriptures! Alright, so what does Romans 7.12 say? What does Romans seven twelve say then, Bud? Seven twelve. Romans seven twelve. Romans seven twelve. Do you understand the first half of Romans? Paul is laying it down. Oh, you can't answer the question, so I'll, I'll answer it for you, Bud. I'll answer it for you. Romans seven twelve says, "Therefore, the law indeed is holy." Hallelujah, and the commandment is holy. And righteous and good. <laughs> that is awesome. That is fantastic. Hallelujah. That's a question you have to answer. How can something holy and good be bad? <laughs> what is good only becomes bad to you when you're reprobate. And you're a sinner like you, a hater of the law. That's when it's going to do you bad. You're going to burn in the lake of fire because you hate the very loving instructions that the Father gave to his people. How can you be this stupid and have a heartbeat? How can you be this dumb and brave? How can I be this dumb? So you want me to believe what you believe, that the law is actually, it's actually bad. It's actually bad. The law is bad. Paul was lying. Paul was lying in Romans 12. That's what you want me to believe. You want me to believe that the father, Yahuwah, was lying in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 11, when he says, these commandments that I'm giving you today is not too difficult for you or too distant for you. You want me to believe that's a lie. You want me to believe that the Messiah, like you said on our debate tonight, that the Messiah was actually a sinner. He actually broke the Torah. He broke the Sabbath. He actually sinned. You want me to believe that foolishness? Well, guess what, bud? You're talking to the wrong guy. You decided to call the wrong guy to debate. And I thank you. I thank you for being foolish on the recording because it's going to go all over YouTube. And I think I got what I needed from you. You got emotional. You got into the flesh. You got all, you went all over the place, bud. Even right now, right now, you're just all over the place, man. You really hate the law. You just, you don't like the law at all. And that's the brainwashing that cemetery school has done to you. I'm sorry you went to cemetery school. I was about to go to cemetery school after I got my bachelor's degree. After I got my bachelor's degree in Christian counseling, I was gonna go to cemetery school, but I'm glad that the Ruach was pulling me not to, because then I would have really spiritually died. I don't know if I would have recovered from that. And I'm hallelujah, I'm glad I didn't go there. So I'm sorry, Paul. I'm sorry you're from the Bible Belt. 
I'm sorry you were brought up and brainwashed in Christianity. And I'm sorry that you're double-minded and you don't know whether your Messiah was a sinner or not. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you don't know whether the law is good or not. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. I know what you're going through. I feel your pain. I feel your pain, bud. What? Do you know what the Ruach? Do you know what the Ruach is? Do you know what the Ruach is? It's a person. Do you know who he is? Yeah. It's the it's the who person, is? it's the manifestation of the Father to his creation. No, it's the Holy Spirit. The Ruach is the Holy Spirit. Yes, yeah, set apart spirit of Yahuwah. You know Yahuwah no. is the okay. spirit, and where the spirit of Yahuwah is, there is liberty. But the law, there's no liberty. Why are you getting so angry, bud? Calm down. Oh, listen. Bring it down. Oh, Why are you so angry? No, listen. You don't listen. David was never this angry when he talked about the law. He actually loved it. He said, in Psalms chapter 1, he says, Blessed is the man that does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, or walks in the path of sinners, or sit in the seat, or sit in the seat of scoffers. But his delight, oh, here we go. You're not going to like this part. You're going to start getting loud. But his delight is in the law of Yahuwah. Wow. Oh, my gosh. David was a heretic, according to Christianity. I'm sorry. I can't believe that. I want to believe the whole word of God. I want to believe the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. I'm sorry. I can't, I can't go back to the vomit. I can't go back to the cesspool of pig mud of Christianity. I can't go back. That would be spiritual suicide for me. That would be suicide. I can't do it, Paul. I can't do it, Paul. This is what John was talking about. He was talking about people that say they keep the law, but don't. You're a liar. You don't keep the law. Well, guess what? I got news for you. The Messiah said, even if I'm a hypocrite, you still have to obey the law. <laughs> Wow, Matthew chapter 23, verse 3. Even if I'm a hypocrite, you're not supposed to follow my hypocrisy. You're supposed to actually follow the law perfectly without hypocrisy. Wow. Oh my gosh. But you don't like that one. You probably you're probably gonna cut that page out of your Bible tonight. You probably never saw that that verse before. And now you're gonna cut it out since I uh, brought it up in our debate. So listen, Paul. Whether I'm a hypocrite or not, does not is not a license. It's not a get out of jail free card for you, bud. If I'm a, if I'm a hypocrite, it's not a get out of jail free card, bud. It's not a get out of jail free card, bud. It's not. You're not getting out of jail. You're still locked up. You're still a sinner. You're still cursed. You haven't repented. You hate the very thing that is good and holy and righteous. I rebuke you, Satan. I rebuke you, Satan. I rebuke you, Satan. Lawless one, get behind me. 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 Read Psalms 119, Paul. When you get a chance, read Psalm 119. Meditate on that. Pray on that, bud. It's the it's the longest psalm, and it's filled it's filled with loving the law of Yahuwah. Your your flesh is gonna hate it. Your flesh is gonna hate it, but your spirit man is craving it. Your spirit man is craving it. Wow, you're really demon possessed, man. You got no. No humility, you got no 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 gentleness, you got no kindness, you got no self-control. Man, your anger, your anger levels are worse than mine. People are being destroyed because of this stuff. People are being destroyed? No, people are being destroyed by Christianity since the first century, mixing paganism with things that are supposed to be holy, making up their own holidays making up their own religions, addicted to sports and entertainment, 
People are addicted to Hollywood and celebrities and Christianity. You got Hollywood coming into the churches. You got booty shaking coming into the churches. You got you got the circus. You got circuses coming into the churches. You got churches celebrating Halloween now. You got churches that are LGBT now. You got churches that are, I mean, you think it's a it's a circus. It's a mess. It, it is a hot mess. The church is in the worst state it has ever been since the first century. Except for the time when the Romans were, you know, going on the crusades and actually killing real believers. Uh, that would probably be, for me, it was probably the worst time. I'm glad we don't live in that time. Catholicism was a cult. Yeah, that's your mama. That's your mama, Paul. The Catholic Church is your mama. That's where your church comes from. What religion are you, by the way, Paul? What 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 denomination are you? The Catholic Church. The Catholic Church doesn't believe. What denomination are you, Paul? What denomination are you? What denomination? I am no denomination. You're non-denominational, huh? What church do you go to? I don't go to I don't I don't go to, I don't go to any one church because I don't believe in that. Oh, hallelujah. Well that's that's a little progress. Where do you fellowship? The one who wants progress, dude, God is. Where, so where, that's the where do you fellowship? You fellowship at house to house? You have a home fellowship group? I have that. I have a lot of friends that we're like-minded. We believe the same. We and we talk about the scriptures. We talk about God. We worship and we pray together. And that's what we do. Okay. So you don't claim a denomination. You're not Baptist, Presbyterian, Calvinist, or anything like that. You're just a believer in Christ? Exactly. Okay. According, according to you, I believe in the false Messiah. Well, yeah, because you believe Christ was a sinner. So, of course, you're 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 lawless and you're going to hell. I mean, what am I supposed to believe? Dude, okay. Did Christ tell the blind men to walk to the to the river of Shalom? Yes or no? So what? Yes. Okay, that broke the law because of uh, chapter and verse. I asked you on the debate to give me the chapter and verse. Where in the Torah? Where in the first five books does it say that that's breaking the law? I showed it. It's right here. Where? It's right here. Where? If you will be quiet for 30 seconds, I will tell you. Okay, Exodus. tell me. Exodus, be quiet. Hush. Exodus 16, 29. It says, see, for the Lord has given you the Sabbath. Therefore, leave my mouth. Therefore, he giveth you on the sixth day the bread of two days, because you had to fix your meal before, because you couldn't fix your meal, you couldn't bake bread on Sabbath. On the sixth day the bread of two days, abide ye every man in his place. Let no man go out of his place on Shabbat. All right, let's, can we go to the context? Since you're a big guy about context, let's go to the context. Where is this taking? Hold on. Shut your mouth real quick. Shut your mouth. Let me talk now. All right. Exodus 16. This is this is the, the, the context. This is taking place in the wilderness. Right. They were in the wilderness. OK. And they were being provided manna. This was instructions that they were given on this specific time. This was not a commandment to be kept. For all time. If this was a commandment to be kept for all time, why were people going to the synagogue on a Sabbath? All over the New Testament. Why? Hey, listen. Listen to me, okay? Please listen. I'm only going to listen if you answer the question. But you couldn't walk to the Sabbath. You couldn't walk to the synagogue on Sabbath. That was against the, the, the Mosaic law. It doesn't say that. in the context again this isn't a statute this is not a statute to be kept for all generations do you see that after here does it say hey tell your children generation after generation to do this if you keep reading verse 30 it says so the people rested on the seventh day the house of israel called its name manna it was like coriander seed and white 
and was white and it tasted like wafers with honey. Moses said, this is what Yahuwah has commanded. Fill an omer with it to be kept for, gener for okay. generations to come so that they may see the food I fed you in the desert when I brought you out from the land of Egypt. He's not saying keep this manna so you can remember to stay in your house every Sabbath. That's ridiculous. Let's keep, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Hold on. Let's see. Let's see what it says. Verse 33. Moses said to Aaron, take a jar and put in it an omer full of manna and place it before Yahuwah to be kept for generations to come. Just as Yahuwah commanded Moses. So Aaron placed it before the testimony for safekeeping. Verse 35. Now the Israelites ate manna 40 years until they came to a land that was inhabited. They ate manna until they came to the border of the land of Canaan. There was a limit to this specific instruction until they came into the promised land. But read the context. Dude, You're you picking crazy. one verse and making a doctrine out of it, bud. No, dude, you are complete. You're taking. You're applying a completely different context to this scripture. No, the I'm not. Is not the context for it, dude. Like, do, do you respect the word of God? Let me ask you that. Do you have any respect for the word of God? I have more respect than you do. I don't believe my Messiah no, was a no, sinner. No, you don't, because I let the word of God say what it says. I don't try to, if I don't like it, I don't try to say, well, let me go over here and fix this with that. I'm not no, running around saying my Messiah sinned. I'm not running around saying that. Only a heretic would say that. Only a reprobate would say that. I didn't say he sinned. Yes, you did. And, look, what did I say earlier? What, what did I say earlier? It will be know? on my YouTube channel. Everybody what? listening what? right now to this Facebook Live who's hearing this conversation, our debate will be on YouTube, on YouTube, live on YouTube, our debate that we had tonight. If you add a one word, I will come after you. You better put every word that was uttered. If oh. you want to correct it, I will come after you. Oh, I will. I will put every word. And I'm not scared of you, bud. Get behind me, Satan. Bring it on. No, you're scared of the truth because you're Bring it on. Devil. Yeah, you're oppressed by devils. That's why you can't shut up. No, you're oppressed by devils. That's why you're out of control. You're doing it right now, you idiot. You're doing it right now. You can't control your mouth. You don't want to listen, but you want to talk. You want to teach, but you don't want to learn. You hate the you law. Want... Which one is worse? You know why I hate the law? Yeah, you know tell me it. why you hate the law. Hey, I'll tell you why Devil, I hate the law. go ahead. Expose yourself. Because, because it was... Are you going to shut up and let me talk? You're going to run your mouth. Go ahead, devil. Talk. Go ahead. Everyone's listening on Facebook right now. Go ahead and tell everybody why you hate the law. I hate the law because it was the law that nailed Jesus. Jesus had to suffer because of the law. Wow. The law nailed Jesus, he said. He said if you respect the word of God, that's what Paul and Peter both said. Wow. Now, you said earlier that salvation is being sanctified and, and saved by grace through faith in Christ. Now, can you can you, can you you show me the scripture that says the law nailed the Messiah? Can you can yeah. you give me the yeah. scripture? Yeah. yeah, I'll do it right now, dude. Go ahead. Colossians 2. Colossians 2, go there, brother. Yeah, let's go, bud. Oh, don't cry. don't cry, don't cry, don't cry, don't rant. Come on, just go to Colossians 2. Just get to the point. All you did was rant, you hypocrite. Colossians oh, 2. Come on, Christian, you can do it. Don't you tell me what to do, you lying hypocrite. <laughs> oh, yeah. man. You gotta be laughing when, when, when you're running your mouth is all over you. I laugh at wickedness. I laugh at the mockers and the scoffers of the word of Yahuwah. You guys are a big joke to me. Colossians 2. Come on, Christian. Colossians 2. I'm waiting. Where did the law kill the Messiah? No, you've never encountered boldness. Colossians 2. I'm waiting. You've never encountered boldness. Okay, I'm waiting. Here, dude. I'm waiting. Okay, let's go to... Dude, I'm there. If you'll shut up, I'll read. You want me to read or not? Come on, Col Come on, Christian. I'm waiting. Okay. Dude, quit interrupting me. You're not reading yet. I'm going to keep interrupting until you read. Because you won't shut up. 
Come on, Christian. Therefore, as you receive Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, not the Torah, in Christ. Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, not the Torah, in the faith. Just as you were taught, meaning they were taught to be established in faith in Christ, not the Torah. Then it says, see to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit. According to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the world, and not according to Christ. For to him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily. And you have been filled in him who is the head of all rule and authority. Now pay attention. Listen very carefully. Yeah, I'm waiting for when the law killed the Messiah. I'm waiting for that part. Go ahead. Uh, uh, I thought you like context. Suddenly you don't like it. Yeah. In him also, listen, in him also were you, were you circumcised with a circumcision made without hands by putting off the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. The circumcision of the heart, not the flesh. Having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the powerful working of God. Now it comes down here in verse 16 and says, Therefore let no one pass judgment on you in questions about food and drink or with regard to a festival or a new moon or a Sabbath. These were a shadow of things to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. Let no one disqualify you, insisting on, on asceticism and worship of angels, going in details about visions, puffed up without reason by a sensuous mind, and not holding fast to the head. And it comes right here. Where's, where's that at? Yeah, where is it? Uh, it's, it's here. Okay. I'm looking for it. Uh, it's, it's here. Hold on a second, man. I, I may have the wrong. I may have the wrong passage. I, I'll get. I'll get it in two seconds. Okay. Having wiped out. Here we go. Here we go. It's Colossians two fourteen. Colossians two fourteen. All right. Yeah. Having. Okay. Listen. Uh oh. I think he hung up. The little devil hung up. His battery ran out again. He's too busy yelling, too busy yelling and screaming. He's forgetting to charge his phone. I had to show this live. This is, this is Christianity at its core, my friend. At its core. You have your nice Christians, which are not like this guy. Trust me, there are nice Christians out there. Let me cover myself up. I'm sorry. I apologize, okay? But maybe I could just upload the audio of this. I'm not sure. But listen, this is the core of Christianity. There are Christians who don't act like this guy. This guy went to seminary school. He claims. I don't know this for sure. He has a YouTube channel. Okay. And uh, said he went to cemetery, cemetery school. That's what I call it. Cemetery school. Because that's where you really die. Um, spiritually. I mean, you get all jacked up by philosophy and vain deceit. Everything that he was reading from in Colossians chapter 2 was exposing himself and Christianity. That was for him. That's why the devil had him go to this passage. The devil was manifesting. He don't know what he's talking about. He said, all right, this guy said, this guy, Paul said, that the that the law killed the Messiah. And I he he came to the scripture and exposed himself, but he's back on the phone. He's oh back God. on the phone now, guys. Alright, now he's saying about? that Colossians <laughs> chapter two, <laughs> verse fourteen. <laughs> He's saying Colossians chapter two verse. All right, hold on. The law can bring two things: blessings and curses. It's all in Deuteronomy chapter thirty. It's all summed up, and Paul repeats Deuteronomy chapter thirty in Romans. Okay, it brings a blessing when you obey, and it brings a curse when you disobey. So guess what, the Messiah. Did away with here in Colossians chapter 2, verse 14, blotting away the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. Those are the curses, the consequences, judgment, condemnation, being away from Yahuwah, being out of covenant, out of relationship, being scattered all over the world with Gentiles that we hate 
and letting them rule over us as a punishment. That is the consequence. Which, by the way, the full fulfillment of the of that being fulfilled has not happened yet. Israel has not been regathered. The curse has not been fully lifted yet. It's not. Let's keep reading. 4, 14, which was contrary to us. Again, the blessings are not contrary to us. That doesn't even make any sense. I don't want your blessings, God. Don't bless me. It's against me. That's stupid. Why would you even think something like that? And then it says, verse 14, continuing, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. That's what was nailed to the cross. The curses, the punishment, sin. Sin was upon the Messiah when he was stretching out his hand and bleeding and crying out to the Father. Why have you forsaken me? Because sin, the sin of the world was upon his shoulders. The blessings of the law wasn't something that the Father was turning away from. That doesn't even make any sense. The father was turning away from the disgusting, filthiness, abomination, defilement, uncleanness of sin, which is lawlessness, which is disobedience to the law. This guy is on crack cocaine, LSD. He is on drugs. I'm telling you, these Christians are hypnotized. I was just watching a YouTube video the other day of this hypnosis guy hypnotizing people. He was on national TV and he was showing how easy it is. Some people are susceptible to it who are weak-minded and others are not. The ones who are strong-minded are like, I'm not listening to your voice because the hypnotist knows that if you listen to my voice and I keep repeating myself over and over again, you're going to eventually listen to what I say. And every time I snap my finger, you're going to remember that you're going to love the law now, or you're going to hate the law every time I snap my finger. And what do you think they're doing in these churches? For years, since the first century, I've exposed it on my YouTube channel. All the church fathers did not provide scripture for why they did away with the Sabbath. None of the scripture they provided was evidence that the Sabbath has been changed or done away with. None. It's all assertion. It's all theology false theology it's 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 a theory that's not even proven okay colossians chapter 2 let's get back to context check this out and having spoiled principalities and powers he made a show of them openly triumphing over them in it verse 16 he doesn't like this one but i'm going to expose this one let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holy day or of a new moon or of the Sabbaths, which are, are means present, are, that means right now, they are, a shadow of things to come. To come means future, means they haven't come yet. They're still to come. It doesn't say they are a shadow of things that came. Everything has not been fulfilled, guys. This is not rocket science. All you got to do is read scripture line for line and really respect what the scripture is saying. Don't do what this guy's doing. It was the law that killed Jesus. The law killed him. Colossians 2 says it. Okay, but I'm waiting for the answer. Where did it say it? It didn't say it anywhere in Colossians chapter 2, bud. Let the drugs go. Leave the drugs alone. Leave the shooby doobies. Shooby doobies ain't good for you, man. Verse 17, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body of Messiah. And if you really sum this up, verse 16 and 17 together, this is what it's really saying. Let no man therefore judge you, but the body of Messiah. Let nobody judge you who's outside of the body. Don't let anybody judge you who's ignorant, who's foolish, who is full of philosophy and vain deceit, like Christian theology and philosophy from Christian seminary school. Don't let these people brainwash you. 
Don't let anybody brainwash you that doesn't have a good foundation of the word, that ain't studied up. Don't follow anybody that's making things up. And when you ask them for a chapter and a verse, they can't give it to you. Leave that person alone. Run from that person. Run. Run while you still can. All right, looks like the homie Christian hung up. So he's not on the phone anymore. This is horrendous. This is a guy I debated tonight. Bible Belt, Alabama guy, so prideful, bragging about his cemetery theology degrees. This is so, I'm putting this on YouTube for sure. I'm putting it on YouTube. This is so sad. Anyway, I hope you guys were entertained. Um, pray for that guy if you feel led to. He's reprobate to me. And all he is for me is bait on my fishing pole. All he is is bait. I don't expect the guy to repent from a debate. I don't expect that. Um, what I expect is for people to hear him and hear me and see who's the one that's tripping. And I expect those who have ears to hear and eyes to see will be able to see the truth. I couldn't calm that guy down. Sometimes I could, but he's out of control. He's too emotional, offended, tripping. He said the Messiah sinned. He broke the Sabbath. He broke the Sabbath. <clears throat> Man, that is crazy. How do you believe something like that? He was saying some other crazy stuff. Y'all need to watch the um the debate. I'm going to title it. I'll probably title it uh, Devoted to Yah. No, that'll be a subtitle. The same topic. I don't know. I'll just make it something different. Debating uh, law, law of Mo is the law of Moses. You'll see a subtitle of Truth Channel. That's his. That's his YouTube channel, the Truth Channel. So devoted to Yah versus Truth Channel. Okay, and I'll title it the same title. You know, New Covenant, Restored Covenant, and the Law of Moses. Do we have to obey the law of Moses? Simple, just simple question. It's the same topic. You guys know me. I'm not changing. I'm not talking about more stuff. This is the topic I'm talking about. And I'm going to beat this till I die. I'm going to be doing videos until I can't do videos no more. And I want as many people to come to this faith as possible before I die. Now I'm going to do the best that I can to expose myself. I'm, I'm putting my reputation on the line. People can find me by looking up my real name now. Or they could a long time ago. So when I'm searching for jobs, it's difficult. Because I know that people are seeing my radical faith. So no, guys, I'm, I'm, I'm putting myself on the line by doing these videos and stuff on YouTube and everything. You know? Keep me in prayer. Keep me in prayer. I'm not going to stop because I don't care about my reputation. You know? So, it is what it is. That was very, very, very entertaining. I had to get that up on Facebook to let everybody hear. <laughs> oh, my gosh. This guy was tripping. Straight Bible Belt. You know, if I was down there, they'd probably kill me. The Bible Belt, they crazy. They got the KKK down there and everything. Yeah, they crazy down there. I have a white brother in my fellowship group that even admits this faith is not accepted. KKK will kill you and come after you. Yeah, bud, it's real down south. It's real. You got pastors who are KKK. You got pastors who are Freemasons. Illuminati. I mean, it's sick, man. It's a big business. It's a big franchise. Not everybody. There he is. I am in the middle of the belt and KKK. That's the brother I was talking about right there. So I can understand if he don't want to go out with a bullhorn and a sign and preach this good news. <laughs> oh, man. Bless your heart, Stefan. Bless your heart, brother. I love you, man.
They have been to his house. Yeah, that's crazy. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed that for the night. It'll be up on Facebook for a while. You guys can watch it over and hear this guy just tripping. He, I'm going to just end with this. Um, this is what this guy struggles with. I'm going to type in lawlessness in my script, in my uh, app. And I'm going to use the KJV. Oh, let me do a different one because I think KJV does iniquity. All right. For the mystery of lawlessness, uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7. If I look up the Strong's Concordance, look up the word for iniquity or lawlessness there. It's G458. G as in George. Greek as in Greek. 458. Look it up. This is what the Christians struggle with. They have a disease. It's a sickness. It's a delusion. It is. It really is. And this is the definition. It says the condition of with of without law. Because ignorant of it, because of violating it, contempt and violation of law, iniquity, wickedness. It's a condition, anomia. And that's what this guy struggles with. He's anomiatic. Anomiatic. I just made up my own word, but it makes sense. It's a disease. It sounds disgusting. Anomia. And he, you could feel the anger from this guy. And I just put him up to let everybody see how foolish he, he sounds. How crazy he sounds. So with that, good night. Shalom. I love you, Yisrael. Stay encouraged. Stay in the word. You guys are not crazy, but this is what I do encourage. Be careful. People are watching you. Don't be a hypocrite. Get your life right. Drop your idols. Stop advertising celebrities and Hollywood and sports on Facebook. Advertise Yahuwah. Advertise the word. Advertise scripture, advertise real life scenarios, the news, things that's going on, prophecy. Leave the entertainment alone. Leave that to your, you know, do that by yourself. It does, it's not worthy to be advertised by us. You know, I'm not against watching a movie or, you know, you know, watching highlights of a game or something, but to be honest, if we're really, really honest, that stuff is filled with things that Yahuwah is not pleased with. I mean, if I'm just honest, just be real. Sports is filled with the lust and vanity and, and, and drunkenness, perversion, promiscuity. I mean, that's why I only watch highlights of basketball games now. I don't even watch full games anymore because I don't want to see cheerleaders and stupid commercials and advertisement for all this foolishness so what do i do hallelujah they started doing highlights of games on youtube nine minute ten minute highlights of just all the shots and that's fun i like it i like playing basketball but i'm not advertising i'm not gonna post anything up about these idols these celebrities these idols these men who make millions of dollars to play a game that i do as a hobby that kids play, that teenagers play. I'm not, I don't respect that. I don't, I don't. It's not worthy to be respected. That's not a real job. It's not right. What it does is it, it draws money in and it allows Satan and these big corporations to advertise sin and lawlessness. It brings the money. That's why I won't pay for tickets. I won't go to a game. I won't pay for nothing. I ain't paying for nothing in Hollywood, celebrities. I don't pay for none of that stuff. And Yahoo has been moving on my heart. You know, watching less and less stuff. It's defiled. We got to be honest. I just, just start at least by not posting about it. Let go of our idols. Throw them out. Get rid of them. It's true. Okay, that's number one. 
get rid of these false holidays. Most of the people on my Facebook, I'm preaching to the crowd. I, I got rid of a lot of Christians on my Facebook page. So most of the people seeing this video on Facebook, preaching to the crowd, you guys already know. You guys are already rolling with the truth. So, But spread the word, man. I see a lot of Israelites still struggling with these things. You know? Even when it's even when it's something scriptural, don't use a picture of a celebrity that ain't living right. That's just it's like an oxymoron. How you gonna have words that are righteous with a picture of a wicked person? Don't do it. You don't need it. You're better off just using a blank background or a nice colorful background that's you know creative. Don't use no Hollywood celebrities, comedians especially. They be the filthiest ones sometimes. Anyway. I gotta go to bed. Shalom.